Good morning. Welcome to the Drive to School podcast. I'm Pastor Goodman, and joining me today is uh, Pastor Brian Wolfmuller. Uh, Pastor Wolfmuller is the author of a number of really good books that you should read. He's, uh, his YouTube channel is uh, Pastor Brian Wolfmuller, and I really suggest you check it out. Um, and he's also a pastor. And so he's here to talk pastor stuff with us today. How are you doing, Pastor? Great. How are you? I'm doing all right. It's, I just uh, want to say this to is such here. a great idea, the Drive to School podcast. I mean, it's just a fantastic <laughs> Who came up with that? Uh, Whoever uh, came up with it, uh, that guy's a genius. I'm grateful to him, and uh, he, he shall remain nameless, even if his his name rhymes with Wolf Mueller. Um, <laughs> we're uh, we're glad to have you. So. Um, Pastor, you're going to be answering questions for us. And if you're listening, you'd like to submit one, you can either drop a question in the comments or email it to content at higherthings.org. And uh, we'll, we'll be happy to uh, make Pastor Wolfmuller think about it instead of me. And so that's thrilling. Uh, we got kind of a doozy right off the bat, though. Uh, so I guess why, uh, why wade your way into the pool when I can just sort of push you in the deep end like uh, my parents taught me to swim? Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Pastor, I got to ask, um, why can't my church love my best friend who is gay the way they love me, even though I'm not perfect either? This is um, a wonderful question, and God be praised for the opportunity to think about it. The first thing we know is that the church and you and all of us are commanded to love all people. And if someone is gay, that does not exclude them from the Lord's love it does not exclude us from the command to love them. So we are commanded to love. That's the Lord's deal. God is love. Uh, and so, so it's not a question of loving or not loving, but so then if it's not a question of loving or not loving, we say, well, what is it? Because what, what is it when someone um, uh, struggles with a particular sin? What is it that the church is supposed to say to that? Here's the basic idea from the scriptures. And it is, and, and not even from the scriptures, you, we can get this from the philosophers, but it comes real clear in the scriptures. And that is that if you just do what you want to do, you are walking the way of death and that way ends in death. So that all the philosophers, well, almost all, uh, and, and certainly all the prophets and the apostles with the Lord Jesus himself says that to pursue a life designed around obtaining what you want is basically just walking the way to hell. And Jesus is going to stand in the way because he loves you. He loves you. He loves your friend, etc. So, So someone says, hey, this is what I want to do. And we have to say, well, sometimes what we want to do is good. Sometimes what we want to do is neutral. Like say you want to go to church. That's great. Say you want to eat nachos, probably neutral. Say you want to fall in love with another man, that's wrong. Or say you want to go and act like you're married to someone you're not married to. Well, that's wrong. And so we, the Lord's word will constrain us from the slavery of lusts and say that we belong to the Lord and freedom comes on the other side of that. So the church speaks clearly to disordered desire. It says that you want the wrong thing, uh, and all of us have disordered desires, but one of those ways that our desires can be disordered is that men want to act like they're married to other men or women want to act like they're married to other women. And so Jesus in love stands in the way of that and says, the pursuit of that desire ends in destruction. And so love sometimes looks like um, intervention. <laughs> and uh, and certainly in in cases where we are tempted to be defined by our, our sin and accept our sin rather than fighting against it, then love looks like intervention. Maybe once I'll tell you a story. Someone came to me. I, I don't even want to tell you if it was a man or a woman, but they, they came and they said, um, pastor, I'm gay. Can I come to communion? And I said, well, can we talk a little bit more about that? Sure. So I said, do you, do you know that this is breaking the sixth commandment? You shall not commit adultery. And they said, this person said, yes. And I said, are, are you sorry for your desires and acting on those desires? And they said, yes. I said, do you want to live a life in obedience to the Lord's word? Yes. I said, not only can you come to communion, but you got to come to communion to, to fight against it. And really the, the church is the last place of hope for, 
for a world drowning in the darkness of disorder and sin. And so, so we're the, there's all this kind of self-loathing and self-hatred and all this sort of stuff that's probably boiling underneath people with disordered sexual desires. And, and the church is the last place where we go and hear that God, in fact, loves you to such a profound degree that he died to take away all your sin, to call you his own. So that we do not pursue a life, we, we are not living a life in pursuit of our own desires, but a life rejoicing in Christ's pursuit of us. So I don't know if that answers, but that's what I would say. To... That's, that's magnificent because it, it points out that first, we, we know that God loves your, your friend who is gay because God died on the cross for your friend who is gay. And love is actually a, a wonderful thing in that we, we don't have to confuse it with ignoring uh, because if I love my kids, I don't ignore my kids. Um, and, and so it, it's one thing to sort of say, go and do whatever you want, like I do to other people's kids when they misbehave at the store. I, I don't I don't care. Um, but to actually love my kids is then to not want to see them get hurt. Um, and, and so that's to tell them the truth, not to keep them out, but to actually draw them in. There, there's a place for sinners at the Lord's table. Um, we just ask an important question. Is this thing that's going on, is it a good thing or a bad thing? Because if, if we disagree with God in this, we, we need to have a bigger conversation. That's, yeah. that's again, not ignoring, but loving. I, I love my kids enough to have a hard conversation. I love my friends enough to have a hard conversation. Ignoring is something you do and you don't love. Yep. There is, there's a lot more to say here, but maybe, maybe one other quick thing, and that is that while all sin separates us from, you know, all sin is the road to death, but is sexual sin... Uh, seems to do more damage, which makes it more interesting, both for our sinful flesh and for the devil. So Paul says, every other sin a man commits outside the body, but sexual immorality commits inside the body. And what often happens with sexual sin is um, it it scars and wounds the conscience. And so there's um, there's not only absolution comes as healing and cleansing, but there's also the, the Lord's word wants to come in and and make clean what has been made dirty, but to know that, that, uh, the conscience, you, you start to get disor sexual sin disorients you. It's like, it breaks the, co the compass. So, you know, the, the conscience is like this moral compass. So we got to be especially aware of sexual sin. It's why Paul brings it up so often. And, uh, and, and Jesus himself brings it up so often and, and why we t talk about it so much in the church. I mean, we don't want, I don't like to talk about this stuff, but it's really uncomfortable, but yeah, it, 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 but it needs to be talked about because the Lord wants us to have a good conscience and a good conscience is not going to come from saying Christians are haters. I can do what I want and nobody can tell me any different. That's you, you're not going to get a good conscience that way. A good conscience comes only by the blood of Jesus. Right. I, I, you even see this. Um, you mentioned being defined by sin. Um, and this is something I don't even think you necessarily have to be a Christian to sort of recognize just how fragile an identity built around a sin gets. So if you say, like, I identify as gay, what you're saying essentially is the most important thing that you should know about me. The, the one thing that defines my, my, my body, soul, personality, all of it is what I do with my downstairs parts in the privacy of other places. I would hope that even the, the pagans would recognize there's probably more to you than that. Like, do, do you also, do you also like chess? Do you like football? Like, can we talk about other parts of you or is this the only thing that can define you? But when sin starts to take over, it, it really does overwhelm your conscience to the point that that's the only thing you can think of wherever you go. Yeah, that's right. And, and you have to, you have to display it. You have to find, I mean, this is, it's an anti-reconciliation. So the devil always has, he has an anti-justification, anti-atonement, anti-reconciliation. And mm -hmm. So this, this idea of having a fellowship of sin, that's the, that's the devil's, that's the devil's uh, work of the anti-communion, the anti-fellowship. So, and we should, and not only does, should the Christian say, Hey, that thing is wrong. We're not just lie detectors, but we actually have the truth, which is to say, Hey, you know, your body has a purpose and the purpose is not your own pleasure. The purpose for the young men out there, the purpose of your body, at least one of the purposes is to be a father. And th this sin, it wants to cut you off from the fulfillment of that purpose and uh, being a husband first, which is beautiful also, but it ends in children and the devil who can't have children 
the devil who's androgynous is always trying to make us act or be androgynous. And so two men acting married can never have children, which the devil delights in. So that, so that we should weep at all of these, these young men who are tempted to never be fathers, never have babies to the young women who are tempted to desire a life of never being mothers, because the female body also has that purpose, which ends in caring, bringing about a child and, and nursing that child and bring it. And if the, so, so we, we can read that purpose in, even in our own bodies, but we've stopped reading our bodies. We've, in, in fact, we've, we've started to treat our bodies like a curse rather than a blessing in our culture. And it's no wonder we have so many problems, uh, but our bodies are a blessing and they preach to us. And the Lord kind of fills out, here's the purpose of your body. It's not your own pleasure, uh, your own satisfaction. It is life. That's the purpose. That's why the Lord has given you a body, life and life eternal. So every time we have a baby, it's a, you know, for the Christian, it's a confession of the resurrection. And th this is, uh, so we have something better than this sort of androgynous uh, sex with no life culture of ours. And, uh, and it's a compelling picture of life. Apart from forgiveness too, because that's the other thing that the devil can't have that doesn't want you to have. So if, if the devil is androgynous and wants to sort of make you like he is, well, apart from mercy, apart from the forgiveness of Christ too, it, it sort of paints us in a, a, a an awful picture that if you are struggling with the sin, there's no forgiveness for you in the church, which is the one place that's actually set up to, to offer you the forgiveness. That's, right. that's, that's, that's potent right. stuff. That's right. Wow. Well, thank you. That's, uh, that's fantastic. Thank you so much uh, for taking a shot at the, the hard question off the bat. You're welcome. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. All right. Well, I think uh, we wrapped the boat enough for the day. So uh, uh, thanks for joining us on the Drive to School podcast, Pastor. And uh, again, if you have questions, uh, drop them in the comments, email them to content at higherthings.org. And uh, we'll have to do it again. That sounds great. Awesome. All right. Have a good one.